Summary of Nectar in a Sieve by Kamala Markandaya Rikmani, now an elderly woman, frequently dreams that her husband, who has been dead for a very long time, is lying next to her when she sleeps. During the day, she sits outside with Polly, the child she has raised as her own. She is happy because she can see the hospital building where her older son, Selvam, works. Rekmani starts to talk about her life. She is the youngest of four girls and the daughter of the town chief. As she watches her sisters get married, she dreams of a big wedding for herself. Her mother gently tells her that her wedding will be much smaller because she is the youngest and there isn't much money left for her gift. When Rikmani turns 12, her family marries her to Nathan, a tenant farmer. Many people think this is a bad match for her. Rekmani is nervous when she leaves home in her husband's cart. She even throws up once on the way, but Nathan is kind and calms her fears. Rekmani is upset to see that Nathan lives in a mud hut, but she acts to be happy with her new home so as not to hurt her kind husband. Rikmani quickly gets to know her neighbors, who are the talkative Kali, the worried Janaki, and the beautiful and pregnant Kunthi. Rikmani gets close to Kali and Janaki, but Kunthi stays far away. Rikmani knows that she is more of a problem than a help to her husband Nathan because she doesn't have many real skills. However, Nathan is patient and praises her a lot for everything she does well. Kunthi's only neighbor at home when she goes into labor is Rikmani. Kunthi asks Rikmani to leave her alone, but Rikmani thinks the other woman is going crazy from pain and fear and stays to take care of her. When she finally gets back home, Nathan is very angry and tells her not to forget about her new pregnancy or wear herself out. Even though writing isn't useful for a girl, Rikmani starts to work on it. Rikmani promises that she will also teach her own children how to read and write. Nathan doesn't know how to read or write, but he admires his wife's skills. Rikmani likes that about Nathan, because many men would feel uncomfortable with a wife who knew how to read or write and might even forbid them to do so. Soon, Irawadi, Rikmani's daughter, is born. She is sad that her first child is a girl, but she comes to like her quickly. Nathan also loves his daughter a lot, even though most dads don't. Rikmani doesn't get pregnant again for another six years. When she goes to see her folks, she and her mother go to the temple and pray hard for more children. Rikmani tells a British doctor named Kenny about her worries about not being able to have children, and Kenny fixes her. Soon after, Rikmani gets pregnant and has a son named Aryan. The whole village has a party, but Rikmani never tells Nathan that she went to a strange doctor for help. In the years that follow, Rikmani has four more boys. Their names are Thumbi, Morrigan, Raja, and Selvam. Even though she is happy to give Nathan boys, they put a strain on the family's finances and force Rikmani to sell most of her crops. One day, young Aryan runs into the house to tell Rikmani that things are going to change in the village. Hundreds of men have come and are building a tannery in the village square. Building goes on for months, and then one day the tannery is done and the workers leave. Some people are sad to see them leave because they bought a lot of local goods, but Rikmani is glad because they raise prices and make the town dangerous for children. Nathan warns that the tannery will have to be run by people again. Rikmani no longer lets Irawadi hit on her, which limits her daughter's freedom because there are so many new guys around. Soon after that, Rikmani was gathering dung for firewood when Kenny came to visit. Kenny laughs at Rikmani's country ways, like burning dung, but he is very nice to her kids and speaks to Nathan in their language when he is serious. From this point on, Kenny comes to the house often, bringing treats for her kids and sometimes goat's milk for Selvam. Rikmani knows that he takes care of the people who work at the tannery, but she doesn't know what he does when he leaves the village or if he has a family. Irawadi will have to choose a husband at some point. Even though Irawadi has a small gift, she is very beautiful and manages to find a good husband who will one day receive a lot of land. Ira is scared to leave home, but she doesn't argue with her parents about it. At the end of the wedding, as Rikmani watches Irawadi drive away with her new husband, she can't quite believe that she no longer sleeps under her house. 
That year, the monsoons start early and hit the crops and house hard. When the rainy season is over, Rikmani uses some of their small stash of rupees to buy rice. She is shocked to find that prices have gone up sharply because of the damage caused by the rainy season. Five years after Irawadi got married, Rikmani is surprised to see her come back home with her husband. Irawadi has no children, so her husband is bringing her home so he can marry someone else. Irawadi is sad because her marriage broke up. Around this time, Aryan and Thumbi look for work in the tannery because there isn't enough food at home with Irawadi. With the money the boys earn, Rikmani can feed her family better and start saving for her daughter's weddings. When Nathan goes to a funeral, Rikmani walks into town to talk to Kenny about Irawadi's inability to have children. He tells her that her daughter should come see him. On her way home, she runs into Kunthi in a back alley. The woman accuses her of using her husband's absence to sneak around and see other men. Rikmani hits her, and then she sees that Kunthi is wearing a sari that shows a lot of skin and has sandalwood paste smeared all over her body in a sensual way. She runs home quickly. Aryan and Thumbi leave home for good to work on tea farms in Ceylon, and Morrigan goes to work as a servant in a big city. It's a dry year, and crops die because they don't have enough water. Nathan doesn't have the money to pay Savaji when he comes to get the rent. The family sells the few things they have to get half of the rent money and agrees to pay the rest soon. When it finally starts to rain, the family starts planting again, but they are almost out of food. Rikmani carefully divides up their last bit of rice and keeps a close eye on it. She carries some of it with her and buries the rest. Kunthi shows up one day, thin and worn. She threatens to tell Nathan that she saw her alone in town if Rikmani doesn't give her food. Soon, Rikmani realizes that the hidden stash of rice is also gone. Nathan admits that he gave it to Kunthi, and she threatens to tell Rikmani that she and Nathan had an affair when they were first married. Both of Kunthi's boys were born to Nathan. Rikmani is very sad, but she also feels like they are finally free of Kunthi. Soon after, the men of the town bring Raja's dead body home. He was looking for food near the tannery when he was killed by a watchman. Rikmani feels nothing and stays quiet during the funeral. Two tannery workers tell Rikmani that the tannery is not to blame for Raja's death and warn her not to press charges. Rikmani doesn't know how to go to court, so she doesn't know why they're there. As time goes on, everyone in the family gets weaker, but Kuti is the worst. One night, Rikmani hears someone moving in the night. Thinking that Kunthi had come back to take more, she fights the person, only to find out it was Irawadi. By the way her daughter is dressed, she can tell that she has been working as a prostitute to get money to feed Kuti. Rikmani is sad and Nathan is mad, but they both know that they can no longer force their daughter to do what they say. Irawadi buys food for his family, but Kuti dies from not getting enough to eat. Kenny has been gone for a few months when Rikmani sees him in the town. She tells him that two of her sons have died, and he tells her that his wife has left him and that he doesn't talk to his boys. Rikmani says that a woman should stay with her husband, and Kenny tells her that she is too simple to understand the situation. Rikmani tells Kenny before she leaves that Irawadi is now pregnant with a child that is not hers. Selvam tells his parents one day that he doesn't want to stay on the farm. Instead, he wants to work with Kenny as an apprentice while he builds a new hospital in town. Kenny shows Rikmani his plans and tells her that he has gotten money from people in Britain. Selvam spends more and more time with Kenny and less and less with his own family as time goes on. He learns more about the outside world than his parents do, and he starts to believe many of Kenny's ideas. Slow progress is being made on the hospital, and it looks like Kenny may not have enough money to finish the project. However, he has promised to do so. Sivaji shows up and tells them that their owner is selling their farm to a tannery and that they have two weeks to leave. Saddened, they decide that Selvam and Irawadi will stay in the town while Rikmani and Nathan go to the city to look for Morrigan. They have to sleep in a temple because it takes them two days to find his house. Thieves come at night and take their small bags of things and all of their money. 
a street kid called Polly tells Rickmani and Nathan that Morrigan lives on Coyle Street. When they get there, though, they find out that he no longer works there. The new maids lead them to another house, where they look for their son in the servants' rooms. Instead, they find Morrigan's wife Amu and her boys. Morrigan has left Amu and she doesn't know where he is. Amu is tired and angry that she has to take care of her kids by herself, and Rikmani feels bad that Morrigan has been a bad husband. Rikmani and Nathan don't know what to do next because they don't even have enough money to go home. Rikmani decides to work as a writer and reader in the marketplace. She sets up a small stall, but few people believe that a woman can actually read, so she only makes enough money to buy rice. Polly, who knows how the city works, suggests that Rikmani and Nathan make more money by working in the stone mine. Over time, Polly grows close to the family and helps them get around the city and keeps an eye on their money. Rikmani offers to take him home with her, but he rudely tells her that he doesn't want to live in a small town. One day, Rikmani comes across Nathan in a feverish state. The next day, he dies. Rikmani uses her small savings to pay for the trip home after she talks Pulley into coming with her. Selvam and Irawadi are glad and happy to see her again. About the author Kamala Markandaya was born into a rich family in India. Markandaya went to school at the University of Madras and worked as a writer from 1940 to 1947. After India got its freedom from Britain in 1948, Markandaya got married to a British journalist. She lived out the rest of her life in England, but she often went to India. Markandaya's first book, Nectar in a Sieve, came out in 1954. It was a big hit right away, especially in America. Markandaya wrote 10 books over the next few decades. The author was known for being very private, so she didn't talk much about herself in conversations. In 2004, she died. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.